Spirit. Peace be with you. This morning we celebrate the sixth Sunday of the Easter season. And then next week, next few weeks, we'll move into the transitional feast that move from Jesus and the Easter season to the coming of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to listen especially to the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, Cornelius, 
and the Holy Spirit, the early church. In a very practical way, the other two readings help Peter understand what to do. So you listen to those also. As we begin our celebration, let us do so as always, spending a moment calling to mind our sinfulness, our human frailty, asking once again for God's gift of forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, 
and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up. I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and say, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. And Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because God 
because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord.
I know, I, I can tell that. When I see them up there, it looks like I thought I'd have a touchdown or something. Anyway, let me start over. Um, I want to wish the mothers a happy Mother's Day. As I mentioned, um, and you didn't hear probably, um, we are indebted to all of you. Your presence, your goodness, your faith, in all of its ways sustains each of us. And it's a day for us to give thanks for the mothers who are here and the mothers who are already with the Lord. Last week I said that what connected the readings was the word connected, connectedness. This week it's more like the same, but it's also inclusion. I asked you to listen carefully to the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter enters the home of Cornelius. Cornelius is not of the Jewish background. Cornelius is what he called back then a Gentile, often a pagan, or a believer in another type of religion. Obviously, from the context, a very good man who had a vision, as did Peter, that this event would happen. Peter should not have entered the house. It wasn't in scripture, but the oral tradition was that a Jewish person would not enter the home of someone who did not believe as they did. But he entered the home. And that's what I think I want to say a few words about in relationship to what will happen in the next couple of weeks. This is the early church. We have been celebrating after we celebrated our Lord's public ministry, then we started celebrating this Easter season, the various events. And we will have the concluding events in the next three weeks. Next week, we will celebrate the Ascension. Jesus has finished his work here. He will return to the Father and have the Father prepare to send the paraclete the Holy Spirit upon his followers, Jesus' followers. He tells them as he leaves, go out into all the world, witnessing, spread the good news, baptize, and I will be with you until the end of time. The following week, we celebrate the Holy Spirit, the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost, that, that event that completely took these um, apostles and the holy men and women and turned them upside down. They, they, they were so empowered by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And finally, three weeks from now, we will celebrate the Feast of the Trinity where we understand even better that God is one. But there are three persons and we have seen the Father throughout salvation history. Jesus has been with us and saved us, and now we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. So back to Peter and Cornelius. Peter would have known the other two readings we have today. They weren't on paper yet, written by John. They, Peter would have been long dead, martyred before they were written probably 30 years after his death. But the context and the content were deeply embedded in Peter and all the early Christians. In, first, in the um, first John letter, basically it's the core message. Love is of God. Let us love one another. God sent his only son that we might have life through him. Love is of God, let us love one another. Peter certainly knew that when he walked through the threshold into Cornelius' home. He also would well remember the Last Supper discourse in our Gospel, the 15th chapter of John's Gospel. You are my friends, I chose you, 
I want you to go and bear fruit. Remain in my love, keep my commandments, and your joy will be complete. Remain in my love, keep my commandments, and your joy will be complete. When Peter was speaking to Cornelius, he was saying similar words. I begin to see, Peter says, that God shows no partiality, no special group. Every group is special. Every person is special. No partiality whatsoever. Whoever fears him, and we can turn that around from the quotation in John's Gospel, whoever loves him, respects him, whoever is at one with him, and acts uprightly, and as the readings earlier would tell us, keeps the commandments, is acceptable to him. Love, response to the commandments, and the end result, at one with God. It's interesting in the gospel. Peter is speaking, I'm sorry, in the reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter is speaking, and then all of a sudden, while he's still talking, he is interrupted. The Holy Spirit, recognizing the interest and faith of this group of Cornelius' family and friends, descends on them immediately. Peter's still talking. So Peter gets out of the way, has that experience with them, and immediately says, let's, let us now baptize them. The Spirit came, and then baptism brought them into the early Christian community. It was a major transition or inclusion in the early church. God had opened everything up to every other person who was interested. And it's interesting with Peter. I mean, he was focused enough that he got out of the way and let the Holy Spirit intercede, and then he built on what the Spirit was providing for them and for him. So today, as we finish up our Easter season, this sixth Sunday, and as we prepare for the feast that celebrate the transition, in a sense, from the second person of the Trinity to the third person, let us be conscious of how important imitating Jesus is for each of us and his presence for each of us, especially at the table of the Lord, but let us also be very conscious that the Holy Spirit drives us to do what is good, to do what is helpful to others, to reach out and care for others, to be inclusive of others, and to be at one with all. God is with us in a very special way, and we need to simply take advantage of his gifts. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Let us now join together in our prayer as we present to the Lord the needs we have and especially present the needs of others, asking that he reach out especially to those who are most in need. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. With the Holy Catholic Church, that by living the new commandment of love, we may bring God to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women of all nations, that they may fear God and do what is right in accord with their consciences. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office in our nation, that they may be guided by God's grace to serve us with honesty and impartiality, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married people, that each day, through joy and sorrow, they may take to heart the Lord's command to love one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters, that God may grant them an eternal home through the masses and prayers of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the growth in the early church and the transition of those times, help us not only to stay close to your Son, Jesus, through the Eucharist, to be at one with him, but to rely on the presence of the Holy Spirit directing and guiding our lives. We make this prayer through your Son, Jesus, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of his saving food through Christ our Lord. There are two groups in the back of church that would like your support. Birthright of Delaware is selling roses as they usually do on this Sunday. And they have a table on the right hand side, left your left hand side, close to the stairwell going to the choir. And then our St. Peter's Cathedral School will have its annual walkathon on Friday, May 14. And you can help support them. There'll be someone on the other side. Um, collecting money and um, I think it's just money. Yep. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.